Hello, I'm SMB Collector. Welcome back to this series where I unbox the collection that I bought from Scott Muma. I've created a playlist of all the previous unboxings, so make sure to check that out if you haven't yet. But now, let's get started. First up is this awesome little tin container for Super Mario World. I believe this was originally sold with chocolates inside. Lots of characters on here, including a Wiggler and a Bony Beetle. You don't see those around very often. This was made by a UK company called Kinnerton, dated 1993. Next is a Super Mario Bros. mini pinball game. It might not look like much at first, but in reality this was offered for a time as a premium inside boxes of the Nintendo Serial System Serial, as seen advertised here on the front of the box, and nowadays can be a challenging item to find. Food related collectibles are one of my focuses, so getting one sealed with its instructions and everything from all the way back in 1989 is a real joy. Up next is something I've been wanting, this tube of Auragel Super Mario Toothpaste. On the back we can see it's dated 2014. I'd seen it online, but I'm pretty picky about what I buy there, so I was hoping I'd find it in stores. I never did though, so I'm glad to own it now. And then continuing on, we have another item dated 2014. This is a lunchtime go pack made by Zach. So you undo the latch. And on the inside, there's a compartment where you can put a sandwich or whatever you want, and then a few more compartments down here to put the sides and all the rest of your lunch. A similar item, this is a Mario Kart Wii lunch bag. Here's the tag. Made by Fast Forward, dated 2011. Next, we have the Super Mario Bros. Action Wallet made by Avon in 1990. The action portion of the name refers to this lenticular frontier of Mario picking up a mushroom block. Moving forward in time, we have a wallet from the Nintendo 64 era. This is from Australia. Made by AZ Designs and dated 1999. Okay, guess what I found in this pocket? A million of these McDonald Monopoly game pieces. So random. And moving ahead even further, we have our final wallet. This one made by BioWorld in 2011. Here's something pretty cool, and also rather fitting. A pad of paper post-it notes for Super Paper Mario. Dated 2007. Here's another pad of sticky notes. I'm thinking this one was sold in the Nintendo World Store in New York, but I'm not positive on that. This is a triple spider tech adhesive product. Some more office supplies, we have a set of Super Mario World pens. They're unlicensed, but I still love them. Look how slightly off and funny the picture of Mario and Yoshi is. These seem to be made by Deepak, which is an Indian company from what I can gather. So there's a red one, a green one, notice how the artwork color is changing too, so there's a standard green Yoshi now, a blue one, a yellow one, and the last one, a purple one. And another pen, this time it's for New Super Mario Brothers. It's got a kind of unusual shape to it. Dated 2007, made by Basic Fun Incorporated. It has a button here that makes sounds when you press it, but right now it has dead batteries. Just like that last piece, the Super Mario Bros. sound keychain was also made by Basic Fun in 2007. There was another one of these in part 2 of this unboxing, and just like that time, this one also has dead batteries. Staying on the subject of keychains, we have the Super Mario one made by BioWorld as well as another one, and then a matching Super Mushroom from BioWorld. This next one isn't really a Mario piece, but it was in the collection, so I'll show it anyways. It's an NES controller keychain, only part of the chain is still intact. It's made of that squishy stress ball material. 
Then an unlicensed Mario and Luigi keychain with a sort of bottle cap semblance to it. I also showed a similar Mario one in part 3 of this unboxing. And one more unlicensed keychain, this Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games one of Lakitu, who's missing his glasses, so he looks even more bootleggy than he already is. And what are keychains without keys? So here's an unlicensed key with a picture from the Mario and Luigi RPG games, and on the other side is that one picture that's only used on unofficial products and yet still gets overused. Here's a roll of Super Mario Duct Tape brand duct tape. Dated 2012. I love fun one-off items like this. Okay, so in the UK there's a company called Bon Bon Buddies, which I'm not familiar with, but they apparently made some Super Mario bags full of sweets and surprises, with this here being a set sheet for the different trinkets and toys they had available in those. This all evidently happened in 2012. And then the rest of the sheet is just different languages and stuff, but now we actually have some of those surprises to look at. First is a complete set of these little badge clips. There's Mario, Luigi, and Bowser. And then a complete set of these plastic whistles. There's a coin one, a red shell, and a bullet bill. Then some of these clip-ons. There's Yoshi. And Wario. Kind of breaks my heart that I'm missing the Waluigi one though. It's a shame these aren't all complete sets like with those badges and whistles. The same goes for these bouncy balls. There's this one-up mushroom one, and a bob one, but I'm missing the superstar one. It's like, I have so many, I just want the complete set. The sticker set is also only missing one, though I don't know which, but I do have Mario, a different Mario, Luigi, a different Luigi, Mario and Luigi, Yoshi, Bowser, a different Bowser, Wario, Waluigi, and a group shot. And then this wasn't on the set sheet, but it's in the same kind of little baggie and also dated 2012, so maybe it's like a secret toy or something. But it's a little pinball game. It's kind of like that serial premium one I showed at the beginning of the video, so that's funny. It's the second mini pinball game premium today. Back in 1988, Hasbro made a series of Nintendo trophy figures with scoreboards, and here we have some of these figures separated from the rest of their trophies, starting with this one of Mario holding a superstar. It's from the trophy called Blooper Chases Mario, but as you can see, the blooper is missing. The second one is from the trophy called Mario Runs from Bullet Bill. This time it's Bullet Bill that's missing. The last one is from the trophy Mario Hurls a Fireball, and obviously it's the fireball that's missing this time. Then oddly enough, here are some more figures separated from their original presentation. First, this Mario one missing his cart from a 2010 Carrera Mario Kart toy. And then a matching Yoshi. Wouldn't it be funny to take these figures and have them sit on a little couch together holding some video game controllers? Maybe even some Wii wheels? That'd be awesome. Continuing with Mario Kart toys, here's a complete set of Mario Kart 7 pullback racers from Tomy starting with Mario. And then there's Luigi, Princess Peach, Toad, and Koopa Troopa. These are dated 2013. Then I also have here a duplicate set of these loops, unless these are the Japanese releases or something, since that seems to be a thing, but I don't know if there's a way to tell the two versions apart once they're opened like this. 
Either way, we once again have the same lineup of characters. Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, and Koopa Troopa. But now we can get a little bit of a better look at them. Here's a similar Yoshi 2, but this one has die-cast elements to it, being part of Tomi's Tomika line of die-cast vehicles. Also from Tomi is a 2011 boxed sticker collection blind capsule set for new Super Mario Bros. Wii. So here's a few of those, starting with the question mark block. Sorry, not a whole lot to see with these capsules. The brick block. and the POW block. Here we have it in the blue capsule, as well as another like that, and then also one in the red capsule. A year prior, Tomy had a set of new Super Mario Bros. styli, so again it's not much to look at, but you can see that this one's a spiny. To fit it into the capsule, the stylus is disassembled into two pieces. Up next are a few square pieces of fabric with some embroidery on them. The first one is Cape Mario, then Princess Peach, Shy Guy, and lastly this dolphin. I don't know what the story behind these are, I thought maybe they were made using that Japanese Game Boy Color embroidery software, but most of the designs on these fabric squares aren't in the game, with the dolphin being the only exception. Moving on, we have a few plush. Starting with this Mario one made by Kelly Toy, which was also available in a wide range of other sizes, both larger and smaller. Then this Mario plush. It has a zippered pouch on its back. Made by Animations, dated 2011. It's a clip-on plush. There's also a Yoshi plush in the set. This time, the pouch is located underneath the shell. Animations also made bigger versions, so big to the point where they're not clip-ons anymore, but backpacks, with the pouch having a much greater capacity. So there's Mario, and again Yoshi. And the last plush, a Koopa Troopa from Goldie in 2010, as well as another one. Up next, a Nintendo Sticker Activity Album. This was made by Diamond Publishing in 1989. Inside are lots of spots to place Diamond's collectible Nintendo stickers, with multiple activities and games throughout. One thing nice about this one is that it's completely unused. It even includes the magic decoders that would understandably be missing from these typically. The collection also has two more of these albums, and yeah, in these ones, you can see how they look after they've been used a bunch, with stickers everywhere and the decoders missing. And as I touched on, the stickers were collectible. People could buy packs like this, open them up, and see what they got. I actually got a whole box of these packs now, which is one of my favorite things that I'm showing today. This is the type of box that could be unfolded into an open display for use in stores. The packs were also available in these five packs, which the collection has two of. There's also a bunch of these stickers loose, so what I'm going to do is throw on some relaxing jazz music and we can go through them together all chill-like. I'll go sort of quickly so we won't be here all day, and I should also mention that they're not organized and there are a lot of duplicates as you can see, but let's not ruin our vibing by overthinking things, just enjoy the soothing sounds of stickers being shuffled through. Boy, this is a lot of stickers. Maybe while I'm wrapping up, you should go give the video a like, hit that subscribe button, and all that other good stuff. I especially like reading your comments, so you always have my thanks when you take the time to leave one. And that's the last one. Good job, you made it. 
Here's what the back of them looks like. There's even a whole stack of just the sticker backings, probably left over from the stickers that got put into the albums. It's kind of funny to see them all saved up like this. Moving on from all those stickers, here's a zippered DS pouch. Also for the DS is a full set of new Super Mario Bros. screen cleaners from Tomy, with the back being the cleaner portion. They're on these little springy straps here. So the first one is Mario, as well as another one. Then Luigi, a Super Mushroom, and another two of those. Fire Flower, Superstar, Goomba, Blooper, and a Lakitu, as well as another one. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you'll do so for the rest of the series. Make sure to follow me on Instagram to see lots more Mario goodies like the ones on screen now. And just as a reminder, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to me here. My subscribers are some of the coolest people I know, so why not consider joining them? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Otherwise, maybe leave some polite, constructive criticism about what you didn't like about it. Whatever you do, thanks for watching.